It was fun to watch. What uh, hero was he playing? Pebbles, actually. He basically did did a crazy strategy of dropping the portal key while he was trying to uh, evade people that were chasing him down. Went around trees, picked up the portal key, and poured it away with it as he dodged them, and it was just crazy. Sounds like Mickey. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like Mickey. All right, so as far as this game three, though, again, reason coming off a, well, let's just say they want to kind of forget that game, and hopefully they do because it's a brand new game here. <laughs> The initial bands, Puppet Master, Ophelia, Pharaoh, Bubbles. So, again, kind of a different pace there with the bands. To yeah, to respect bands, I would say, from BMG's side, getting rid of the Puppet Master and the Pharaoh. Yeah. And, well, recent gaming is getting rid of the Ophelia because they don't have an Ophelia player themselves, unfortunately, uh, as well as with the Bubbles. I'm not sure about the Bubbles, actually. Um, might be some kind of hero that they want to pick up that's weak against the bubbles, I'm not sure about it. Mm -hmm. Can't necessarily see any hero that's that weak against the bubbles though. Yeah. That's kind of uh yeah, it's it's again it's just one of those like especially in a series, it's just like to see that ban it, like see bands like that all of a sudden in game three, it's like, oh okay. I guess that that makes sense. So but uh Sir Bensington again, the one that stands out to me that's not banned and will he be picked up? As I was talking about earlier. It seems like teams are kinda of just up and down with that here lately, so um, I, I could see him being run in BMG's lineup, but the reason for him not being bad, I think, is because these, these players are not necessarily known for playing that hero that well. Not like uh, Kesu or Mike or someone like true. that. It's just a boss with the hero. But I, f hmm, I feel like recent gaming is a little bit more, or a little predictable, once again, picking that Ravenor on the Luna. Sure, it can be an offensive try lane, but it's kind of leaning towards that dual mid. Yeah, with the Kraken suicide. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's again, it's it could shape up one way or the other in the end, but so it sounds like you're you're just feeling the the dual lane mid here with that Ravener Luna possibly, and uh, I mean you already got a Rhapsody Gauntlet over here for BMG, so if that was to be the matchup, it, it, do you think that that could work, or is that probably something that you don't want to do? No, I think BMG has the advantage in that kind of matchup. Um... Well, of course it's even, but Ravenor has dropped a lot mm -hmm. um, in the latest couple of weeks or months. Um, so, well, I would, that's that's why I'm so frustrated about it, I guess, because <laughs> they already like BMG was the one picking up Rhapsody and going to first. So picking up the Ravenor as their second pick, I mean, they could have picked something that's not as predictable. Like, let's say they picked up a Rally. They could have been in the Suicide Lane, it could have been Solo mid, it could have been Dual mid. Like, there's so many options, but when you pick up a Ravenor, you're so limited, so yeah. you can't really respond to your enemy's picks. Um, yeah, we will see what happens, but BMG definitely having a monster draft so far. Yeah. Yeah, the Tempest follow-up. The, the bands, by the way, Parasite, Slither, uh, Torture, Sir Bensington, Engineer, and Swiftblade, actually, were the next year bands. But yeah, Tempest to follow up, so they are going to go the jungle once again. Go on the uh, Tempest this time, they went the, they happened to go the Parasite last game uh, themselves. So, But yeah, that, that's a good point, though. You know, for some reason, kind of Andromeda. setting themselves up. Okay, well, now the Andromeda pick is so maybe they're looking to play aggressive here, possibly. Yeah, when it's so BMG picking up the Tempest, they are... They're more confident in doing it, so to say. They know that they can't be contested. Um, and, well, yeah, I think it's going to... Mm, yeah, I think it's fine. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, how much are you really going to get out of a Ravenor free farming? Like, you can just put a solo hero there, like that Wretched Hag. He's not going to die unless he plays sloppy. And having a Ravenor free farming is not the worst thing in the world, so to say. Yeah. All right, so now PMG, you look at the right click of Master of Arms again. That was a great final pick in game one and uh, proved to be. But this game, not as, you know, you don't look at this up more like, oh, yeah, him with a no fair blade would just wreck them. But it took to be an option. But Oogie actually being right click now. So I don't yeah. think they're going to go for him, though. I, I feel like they should get, unless they're confident with actually playing the hag, they should play someone with a little bit carry potential and someone that has some kind of an escape mechanism. So a Valkyrie that was, well, he was buffed in the latest patch. He would work out, I would say. True, yeah. Or you could go with a Maraxxus. So him was being right clicked by Jonas there. Um, for a few seconds as well. He can, he's actually pretty good against Andromeda and Ravenor. I think he can use his second spell to dodge both of those spells. Mm -hmm. the guy, I just want to see something different, man. I mean, again, they're up to nothing. It's King of the Hill, you know, just after a big patch. Come on, BMG. Come through Yeah, here. good points. Do something different. 
Yeah, Amon Ra would definitely be something different. Okay, there oh. we go. They they come through. <laughs> Amon Ra. <laughs> All right, All so right. I, I assume this is going to be the Gauntlet Solo Mid, then? Is or... it going to? Okay, yeah. yeah. Gauntlet Solo Mid and maybe like a Rhapsody Raw bottom and like Hag Suicide, you're thinking? I don't know. That's... A, a Raw Suicide? <laughs> would that be out of the question? Mm, I guess not. Yeah? They haven't shown their, like, carry or their safe laner yeah. quite yet, though, so it might be a bit risky, but... I, I could definitely see it working out. I mean, Jonas is known for playing these a little bit more crazy suicide heroes from time to time. Yeah. So, um, it, would, it would certainly be interesting to see. Huh. <laughs> uh, I'm just happy they came through. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, Ra's, Ra's just one of those. It's like, there's a couple that stand out to me. It's like, Ra, maybe like Emerald Warden, Bloodhunter coming out. But I was getting at where their, their god tier status in the TMM scene, and, you know, it's on like all throughout the public scene, but... And competitive, they're just like non-existent. A raw, even more so. So it's 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 always fun, you know, seeing him. The rare opportunities uh, we get. But yeah, Blood Hunter to finish things off. That's a little different. What do you think of the Blood Hunter final pick? Mm, I like it. I like it. Uh, it doesn't work on Amora's ultimate, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, still, feel like it's a pretty good choice. Uh, I don't think they're gonna go for the tri lane anymore. Because since they picked up the Amara, they're not necessarily afraid of giving him farm in case that he would be in the safe lane. So I feel like they're just going to go Brad Hunter Andromeda in the safe lane or uh, with Aluna, so one of them, and then have a dual mid as well with the Kraken Suicide. Okay. Yeah, Imba Boy is definitely, I, I say I say not what we see too often. Well, Imba Boy, if, if there was one, uh, he does play a good amount of Blood Hunter, I should say that. So yeah, it's not like, again, like out of the world by any means to see that picked up here. But um, yeah, definitely uh, not one we see all the time at the same time. So. As you pointed out, of course, yeah, it doesn't work against uh, the Pyroclasmic Rebirth, as it's so appropriately called. I just like to say Resurrection, just easier. Um, is it going to, yeah, Jonas a fan, playing the Raw, so that's going to be fun, man. Seeing the Suicide Amun Raw here. And what it seems is, like they are shaping up for the offensive tri lane, or is it they? dual lane, long lane? Ravener and Dromeda, but then where were that? So, like, Aluna to babysit Bloodhunter top, maybe, yeah. I actually like the decision okay. coming out from recent gaming because that's going to force BMG to put Rhapsody down at the bottom and Gauntlet versus Kraken in the mid lane, I would definitely favor that uh, Kraken. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah, that's gonna be fun to see how that shapes up for reason. So, you know, I, I you know the first two games, the first game you know again wasn't bad for reason, but the the trial on that top just didn't work out the best. Obviously, last game you know mix about drafting slash the landing phase just didn't make it just did not come together. This game maybe a little more confidence going into it. Uh, you know, with you think they actually drafted pretty well here overall. I, I would I wouldn't say drafted that well. I, it's definitely better than the last game. But I still favor BMG by quite a lot, simply because of the team fight potential that these teams have. Like the Legion team, they have the Wretched Hag, uh, Ultimate, Tempest AoE, and all that. The Hellborn team, they only got a Kraken. They only got that release the Kraken as a team fight ability. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be desperately uh, in need of having a really good early game here, getting yeah. a fast pull key up on that Ravenor, for example, and then try to get some kind of snowball effect off. <laughs> How about this? So uh, we see a complete swap around from uh, from Reason. They they actually send the Blood Hunter. What's going to end up being a Luna? I'm certain bottom as well. So they have the Ravener and Drama the top to go up against the Almond Raw. And actually, they're going to go on the Almond Raw right here. They're going to do some decent damage. And Drama out uh, with the comments done. That's going to be a cooldown for another eight seconds right here. Raw's in trouble. He is in a lot of trouble. He doesn't have an ability just yet. I assume he to get the path of destruction if it calls for it, but. Oh, no, he's kind of cutting through the woods, come in and, and yeah. save the day. There you go. Oh, in fact, turn around. That'd be big. Oh, there's some good damage right there. He didn't go in with it, though. Ball lighting connected. And Raw, once again, still in trouble. Andromeda trying to get in range for Kamas, and it's not going to happen, though. She's forced to use it on Rhapsody, and that will be the end of that. But yeah, good timing coming out from Rhapsody. But what is going on here? A lot of changes. <laughs> Interesting. Um... I'm not. I don't think it's changed in the last patch, but I, I'm gonna rise. Actually, having two iron bucklers right now. What? Yeah. And I'm not sure about that. It didn't change from what I know. I, I don't think it did. So, 
Yeah, that's that is <laughs> that's like a legionnaire jungle build, maybe. That's <laughs> why where you'd maybe see that. But oh my god, look at that though! The power throw hits. It's not up for the kill, but yeah, he's gonna use the health potion. The is gonna go down, maybe though. Four is it? Outs. Who's gonna get it first? They just want the kill first. Anything. Look at the cut to the trees, though. He's gonna be fine for now. And here comes Tempest. Actually, he goes to the path of destruction. They will get the blow. That's an Amonra first. It did not hit Ravner with the ball, and he's gonna survive. Down goes Raps, and he gets fallen apart for PMG. Granted, Hanskin will at least pick up one kill at the very end onto, uh, onto Andromeda right there, but <laughs> that did not go as planned for BMG. Hey, it worked out for Reason Gaming, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, Alu uh, Aluna leaving the Blood Hunter at the bottom is a good yeah. option, or a good uh, choice in my opinion. So getting up there, getting two fast kills, going to get them some um, early marches on Aluna, helping him covering the runes, for example, and definitely going to get an advantage up here at the uh, top lane now. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know about his Tempest being offensive, though. Like, yeah. what's he actually going to be able to do? He is free energy BM right now, so he's not doing shabby, but <laughs> as soon as now uh, St. Rox here on Aluna is going to pick up his marchers, I, I don't think he's going to be able to stay here. <laughs> See right there, he's trying to steal the Minotaur, but actually Tempest did get it. And, you know, it's funny you say that because, you know, you know, all that maybe would agree in the end, to be fair, him being up here allowed him to get at least a counter kill for his team and uh, for himself. So in that sense, it actually kind of worked out. But yeah, you know, normally you may not expect him to be in that aggressive jungle with the circumstances. But actually, uh oh, Rhapsody in a lot of trouble right here, being collapsed on from all directions. She cannot do anything about it. She is just going to die right there. And Amon Ra, him deciding to try to help. It's not going to be the end of him, but Andromeda, okay, yeah, not going to chase, and that'll be the end of that. But now here comes Tempest once again. Doesn't have mana just yet. He does have bottle charges, though. He's going to use them right there. He has enough for the stun. Can he get a range of Andromeda? Yes, he can. Path to Destruction coming out, but no, nice oh, juke nice coming out from step. Panty. Yeah, not the hardest ability to sidestep, and Panty is successful. Gets the turn kill just before dying, and now actually Hanskin needs to be careful to stick around, not to stick around too long, that is. Oh, he kind of jukes right there a little bit. Now, there is no mana on Ravener, so he doesn't need to worry about sidestepping here. And yeah, he will be fine, but man, I mean, Reason Gaming, they're winning up here, especially at the top lane. Yeah, they got to kill him Bloodhunter now down on Fusi as well, so... Oh, yeah. I really feel like BMG should rotate and go back with the Tempest to their own forest. Yeah. I feel like focusing on the farm of the Hag is much more important than actually focusing on the farm of the Mara here. <laughs> well, oh, geez, especially if he dives like that. Okay, they are going to get a kill on Luna though, as Rhapsody comes in to clean up, so... Yeah, I mean, Ra, he, he, can, he can be a very big presence, kind of that just beefy presence that's constantly dealing AoE damage, but, yeah, not the best start for him, and so as you said, maybe kind of try to switch things up here as far as priority goes for BMG, but yeah, he, Bloodhunter picking up that kill the bottom lane onto a solo uh, Wretched Hag. Is that surprising yeah. to you? I mean, that's kind of... A little bit. Uh, I would say you, should, you shouldn't die against a solo Bloodhunter as a Hag, uh, but at the same time, it... Well, sometimes you underestimate the um, duration of the silence. Mm -hmm. But it seems like they are gonna try to swap it up a little bit because Fuzi is actually teleporting top and getting killed on Masera, so yeah. being a bit useful for his team at least. Oh, Hanskin. He was doing his darnest to hero block there, and it's end up two kills for nothing. Oh, that was just beautiful play also by, by Reason Gaming, sure, but that all started because Hanskin was hero blocking Andromeda the best he could to try to set up a kill on him. And obviously that completely backfired. As soon as Aluna came in there, <laughs> gets the one turn, kill gets the two, and a two for nothing exchange. So yeah, Reason Gaming again stepping their game up. Super KG in the middle lane. He's trying to get away. They're trying to turn this on a crack. And actually, he pops a regen rune. It doesn't last for more than a second though. He goes down, but at what cost? Gauntlet will fall. The release, the crack, and at the last second from Zayn does end up getting a turn kill at least onto Gauntlet. So yeah, the adjustments tend to be made. But how about this? Too? I mean, Imbo Boy's literally been free farming down here at the bottom lane ever since he got that kill. It seems like. Because they just sent, they're not sending anyone down there. <laughs> it's almost as if they're letting him just play a long lane solo blood hunter and allowing him to do so is, uh, is BMG. So, I mean, I think that's an issue. <laughs> it's definitely an issue, but uh, I assume their uh, theory or their opinion is that as long as, like, if he's free farming, he can only get to a certain GPM, definitely, or especially when he's on the long lane, he can pull camps or farm the forest mm -hmm. in the same way as if he's safe lane. So they're just going to leave, they're going to focus on the top and the mid lane, for example. They're going to kill some both Ravenor and Kraken, so Fusi being useful. Uh, but, well, like I said, I definitely think that now when Tempest is back here, they should try to add some kind of pressure on him. Yeah. Because he's a very easy hero to gank. Uh oh, Zanuis. Caster's Curse coming into play right here. Bloodhunter, he might be in a little bit of trouble. There comes a Gauntlet Blast. He put the Suns in a Gauntlet, so that's good and bad. Obviously, it increases his damage, but it does prevent him from Inferno instability. 
it won't matter in the end, though. He does go down as Hag's able to blink in and finish him off. So, yeah, uh, st playing up a little bit too much right there in the end. And again, they, they do make him pay. This game is very chaotic. Like, everyone yeah. is swapping lanes all the time. Kills happening all over the map. I think it's a result of BMG actually having a little bit of a self-confidence boost from the last two games that they won with a pretty dominating yeah. fashion. Yeah, very possibly. And again, it's just going to continue, as you said. In fact, Amundral, he's going to actually find himself in the jungle here. They're going to stack the yellow camp, and he's going to try to maybe progress from there. So, But now what this is doing, yeah, now you see the top lane. Ravener is at least opening up a little bit of free farm in the meantime. As, uh, you know, not the best currently, but now he's up about 255 gold per minute. So, but yeah, no, Reason Gaming no doubt has the advantage here. And they're going to try to take advantage of it. You, you made the good point there earlier on. They don't have the strongest team fight in the end, though. I mean, they got to release a crack, and it's great. But outside of that, you know, it's not the most for coming together. So if your Reason here is a slight lead, do you group up, start pushing some towers, or do you just continue to farm? I mean, they seem a little lost right now, honestly. It's tricky. You don't have the kind of push heroes that you would prefer uh, in a situation like this. But I definitely think that it could overtake the enemy's jungle. Mm -hmm. Just ward up a bit and maybe let Tempest uh, or get a few ganks off on Tempest, for example. Because they definitely have the advantage right now, but they, they, they have troubles initiating. I mean, BMG is smart, they know how to position themselves. Actually, here, Seal Kid is going to be trapped a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go. Kraken, can he get away from this? No, he cannot. You see, the release of Kraken does go off, though. Pretty good one at that. Elemental Void not doing too much there in the end from Tempest. Kind of pulled them out a little bit, but they're going to have to try to chase now. Not going to chase Bloodhunter, but they will get the kill onto a Luna at least. So, yeah, the Team 5 presence, again, guess what I was just talking about? And sure enough, it really shows right there. Uh, we have uh, BMG coming through despite a release of Kraken that actually not ended up being too bad in the end. In fact, Andromeda is also going to be found. Uh oh, Gala is just easy kill. Should be, maybe. Ball lightning. There's the comma's done. They're going for a counter kill. Actually, Gala may fall right here. Yes, he will. Will they be able to get something out of this? They get Andromeda at least. They do Staccato Stun Ravener. And if this ends up being a two for one, obviously Super KG will be just fine with that. Will it be, though? Oh, Wretched Dragon, not enough mana for a Son of Scream. Nice ball lightning stun there by Ravener. And yes, he will survive. So the one for one makes him like, okay, well, that kind of sucks now. But. Good getaway, though, from uh, from Sarah. Playing yeah. Ravener. Manages but to live. But that's team fight abilities that they have really coming into play there uh, in that mid-fight. Like, there's just nothing they can do against the Tempest Ultimate, for example, uh, in the early stage of the game. They don't have the swap up on Andromeda yet. And something that I'm, well, finding a bit curious is the Saint Rux likes to go for these Ghost Marchers on the support heroes. Yeah. That's 1,500 gold. <laughs> I feel like those can be invested in maybe a Boundai, maybe a lot of words to actually get map presence and just bring the pressure to BMG instead of like playing it ca or like yeah. a bit more laid back. No, I definitely see what you're saying. I mean, it, it's said 1,500 gold, so compared to, say, if you just went Strider, that would, that would be an extra 700 gold that you could spend on other resources, you know, towards that Boundai, towards maybe wars up on Andromeda or whatnot, but... Uh, yeah, it goes the full Ghost Marchers. I mean, they have their benefits, sure, but uh, you do wonder if that's the best choice in the end. Um, Blood Hunter, by the way, he actually chooses to get a, a Blood Chalice here, you know. Can definitely be considered a strong item on him, especially since also the Feast change as well, where now you can use the Feast, and it does cost mana, of course, so um, I think that's a solid choice. Now, normally we may see him going Energizer next, but again, we were kind of talking about this at the end of last game. Obviously, he got those changes last patch. Do you think Imbo Boy is going to still go the Energizer? Does it doesn't not make sense for him here. Uh, I think I, um, he might need some kind of survivability. Going for Energizer doesn't provide that much health, but at the same time, they need they need to get some kind of initiation. They do not have any portal keys, for example, right now. So an Energizer would kind of provide a, bit, a lot of movement speed uh, for the entire team in the team fights. So I think mm -hmm. that's still the right choice to go. All right, we'll see again what Amber Boy ultimately decides to go for. Fuzi here on hack has definitely recovered quite a lot. 310 gold per minute here. Again, he got killed 1v1 against uh, Imba Boy at that bottom lane, playing that blood on her. But, you know, like I said, has recovered just fine. In fact, is he pointing to the top lane? I think he is. Yeah, him and Gauntlet. Oh, that's Tempest, actually. But anyways, they're going for kill to blood on her. Beautiful hook by Super KG. Guess what? We've, got, we've said that before uh, to lead off on a blood hunter and ends up being the easy kill as a result. So, again, blood hunter. I mean, that's not really him being pushed up too far by any means. That's just more so, again, good play uh, between the Gauntlet and the Tempest coming yeah, out. Yeah, good so. coordination, getting that port up there uh, by the Tempest. 
but at the same time, I still feel like it's a little bit too far up. I mean, he was almost in tower range when he got hooked. Yeah. Yeah, so I need to be careful about that, and in the end got caught. So yeah, as this game has progressed, again, the start was beautiful for Reason Gaming. It was really strong, a lot of movement going on, but in the end they had the favors. Not so much anymore. BMG is kind of taking over both gold and experience, and Amon Ra has kind of settled down too. He's now, in, like I said, in the jungle, and this is a hero that definitely can't jungle, especially once he starts to get to levels. I mean, between his passive, his W especially, and of course even the Path of Destruction assisting for that. And again, he has infinite mana in that sense too. He's not using it. Instead, using his health. So as long as he has a region and hell, Disco Inferno, for that matter, also helps. Uh, but the assist. Look at Aluna, though. This is interesting. Coming up with the invis. Does she have a rev? Yeah, she has a rev and a ward of sight. So Revenor is coming over, over but yeah. I guess here now as well. So don't yeah. think they're gonna go for anything. But yeah, this the, the experience in gold lead. I mean, it's all coming down to the tempest. The Hellborn team has two supports. They're not gonna be able to farm nearly as quick as the Legion team at this point. So that's why I don't need a block. Oh, Aluna is actually doing it right as I'm saying it. They're blocking the Tempest camps here in the forest. Mm -hmm. Either they need to do that. They should probably get one ward up on the Ancients as well, so they cannot farm them. Um, maybe they can, they can win a farm war by them, but otherwise they have to put some pressure on. I mean, they have to group up while Astro's, Astrolabe. Actually, Tempest is going for something completely different. This game is not going for Ring huh. of uh, or uh, the Mana Ring or the Astro, it seems. Not sure for what cost, but maybe maybe a sack stone with the possibly grave locket. Yeah, I mean they got a kraken and Andromeda, some good physical presence there. So you know maybe that's a yeah, you know, a possibility. But oh, middle lane, we got initiation. Red Jack gonna be gone. Can she blink away in time? Yes, she can. In the meantime, Almond Rock going in with that path of destruction. Andromeda's gonna barely survive now for long. The tick damage too much. They do catch Wretched Hag, and Blood and are still looking for more blood. Tempest has an elemental void. Is he gonna find the opportunity? They need to be careful. Well, this Kraken gonna whiff right there. He has it. He is gonna use it. No, he gets silenced. I believe he was going for it, but he got silenced at the last second, and that's gonna tick him down as well as the auto attacks, but at what cost here? Blood and are now in trouble. Infernal instability doing some good damage. There's a crap lid, and that's the easy kill on Blood Hunter, and now the chase is on. Nice land with the path of destruction. Onto a Luna right there. Staccato stuns to follow, and that will be a counter kill. So Seal Kid ends up with a double tap. No buybacks used or anything like that. That was just uh, Reason Gaming. Again, you can safely say a little bit of overextension at the end there as far as what they were going for and getting turn killed. So it was a solid start, but not the prettiest finish for Reason. Yeah, they were unfortunately they weren't able to finish off the hack. They wasted two stuns, one ultimate and one silence on him, and they still couldn't. Or, I mean, they got him down in the end, but they wasted too yeah. much resources, okay. so... And then they overestimate it, or um, overextend it a little bit. I mean, they didn't have any spells, so didn't really see the point on chasing behind the towers. But yeah, at least good response by PMG. Uh, you know, so I'm gonna get your thoughts here on Armin Ra. He has home of the Black Legion now. Uh, he's actually got an early trinket of restoration too. Um, what what do you expect to see as far as item build? Is this just pure tank, really? You know, the, the, the barrier. Yeah, item in this game, I feel like he is the kind of snowball effect that BMG needs to be in front and just soak up all those stuns, all that magic damage. So Ashamas Hatteras, uh, most likely, maybe into a barrier idol, maybe a portal key later on. But for now, yeah, just go as tank as you can. Yeah. Ghost Marchers picked up by Gauntlet here. He's still a ways away from the portal key, but, you know, probably going to be next in line. Oh, they find Blood Hunter. This should be a dead Blood Hunter. Yep, there's a Gauntlet Blast. There's a Grapple in. Ratchet going to fall a Bat Blast in the face just to make sure. And that's one of those cases where it's like the silence actually helped them because <laughs> he had already used his abilities, and that just gave him even more auto attack damage. So, but yeah, it's probably a kill no matter what in the end. But uh, that is, that is again, one thing to just keep in mind about that... Uh, about the blood crazy. Ancients over here, they kill them off, but actually Rhapsody's gonna get swapped back in. But now, okay, Andromeda might be in trouble though. Path of Destruction does miss, but the Ignite gets a kill. Look at Amon Ra, barely alive, but he does stay alive. There's the Elemental Void in the meantime. Wretched Hag coming to clean up to get some one kill to Luna. Not gonna be able to finish off Kraken though, and now Wretched Hag, in fact, she has to worry about surviving here. She does have a blink coming up in one second and will be fine. So the Elemental Void does at least get the one kill. And actually, he's going to pick up a refreshment rune on top of that. So, yeah, the, the starting that all off again with a pickoff on a blood hunter at the top lane. Again, BMG has calmed things down, and they are really looking good now. All of a sudden, Amon 1,200 gold saved up all of a sudden. 1,400 now. He's going to start yeah. that snowball. I feel like it's good that they are putting pressure on BMG, but they need to do it as a unit, not by in or not as individuals, because... 
Well, right now they're just feeding BMG more or less. Like they can't continue to f or trade equally. They need to be ahead. They need to get Polki up on uh, to Ravenor, mm -hmm. for example, to get the initiations off. But they need to take control over the enemy force. I mean, that's everything that matters right now. Playing safe like this, going for these kind of kills, no, I don't think so. I feel like they should put pressure yeah. and maybe try to take some towers. Maybe go bottom. <clears throat> you see Bloodhunter here. He actually has that major totem, so... Uh, am I... Yeah, okay. That is the change <laughs> of the that, energy. Yeah, that, I was going to say, like, I, I thought it was, but I just double-checked there. So, yeah, he looks like he still is going to be. But as I say that, Casper's Curse, man, he's in trouble once again. Oh and boy! Goes down. I mean, that time again, he was kind of pushed up pretty far, and that was just a good job hiding there. Yeah, they the failed gauntlet. that. I mean, they was going to. I mean, they were gonna bait it. They knew that it was gonna come. Aluna was there, but mm. there were a bit of miscommunication, and he pushed up a bit too far. Aluna wasn't. Yeah. Able to get there in time, and he dies for the third time in a row. He's been dropping like 150 GPM now in the last five minutes, and this, this is not looking good. Uh, He's still cracking down and bots. They're gonna try to get a hack, but nope. <laughs> too, too, uh, too sneaky there, able to blink away. Tempest is actually in trouble in the middle lane. Is he? Yeah, maybe not. Hanskin, he's, in fact, he's kind of going back in. He's going to make them spread out as they realize, wait a second, we might be in trouble ourselves. Double damage picked up by Ravener, and now Tempest will start to fall back himself again. So it looks like he is going that Astrolabe follow-up now in the end with the Gravelock at first. Ominorah just ports out right in front of Bloodhunter. Obviously, number one counter to Bloodhunter by TP, and you're fine. As uh, he kind of shows right there. Middle tower is denied, at least by reason. But, you know, this is actually, Chat's bringing up a good point too. Again, so many changes within the patch. And kind of something we've, we've maybe looked over. Are the new, uh, are the additions to tournament rules, one being the hero and clanks, of course, but the others, um, the items, Spell Sunder and, uh, Ion, and Stone. Ion Stone. Yes. Uh, it, do you see a possibility for either of those two items? Spell Sunder, I'm not sure about that one. I've seen it in some kind of situations, but it's often or mostly used in mid wars actually, because that's where like all the magic damage is happening like all the time. But Ion Stone, I think that's a great tool. And I think it's well, I'm not sure if it's just the players that's not like uh, haven't really noticed the item yet, yeah. or if they choose not to go for it because it's a bit new, a little bit tricky. They want to stick with what they know, but that that item definitely has a lot of potential of becoming um, something every support should pick up more or less, at least in the mid lane. Yeah. No, we we saw it actually. I want to say the last week, the Thursday, the title fight. I think Sink ended up picking it up. Uh, as actually, hold that thought. Top lane, blood under again being gone, and he gets the silence on a gauntlet at least, so stopping some damage initially. With the lack of... Oh, the grapple hits and drama as he swaps at the last second, so at least they get the kill, and they will get a follow-up kill, but... Oh, okay, never mind. Blood on her gets picked off in the end. I thought at least he would have lived, but... No, he does fall, so the efforts fall just short there for a reason, and again, BMG just finding their group now and really starting to go, but, uh, you know, just real quickly about the Ion Stone. We did see it picked up by Sync as they were on their way to victory over Reason, and it was a cool strat, you know, able to get a double damage with it, passed it around as they were pushing into the base, and it was just ridiculous. I mean, you got three different heroes with double damage rune activated, so... Uh, so, yeah, that, I mean, that was fun to see, and yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that that's definitely one we can see uh, as we move on here. It's more of a comfort thing, though, too, as you said. It's still new to them, so... Yeah, Maybe support has been mixing or experimenting a lot with it, so he's yeah. definitely experienced with it. Um, initiation here on the Tempest. Are they going to bring him down, though? <laughs> oh, no, they're not. Steel Kid's like, no, you ain't. Tempest, though. Yes, they will. They they do fight through it, but at what cost here? Path of Destruction in, and Amundral is doing a good amount of AoE damage, all, as well as everyone else. Gauntlet and Wretched Egg also cleaning up. At least Blood and are able to stick in there for a kill, but no, he's now in trouble. Gauntlet Blast hits. Amundral may fall, but he's got his Power oh, Plasmic Reaper. Though. There we go with the kill. Yeah, if Blood got that kill, that would have been huge, but it's not in time. Gauntlet does fall, but Kraken is sacrificed to do so. So, yeah, again, Amundral. Okay, he does get sniped out. But again, he's got that route. I was going to say, so the fact that he has a Reaper still, but at least they make him use it. But he could yeah. care less in the end. If Bloodhunter gets a kill on to the first life, so to say, of when his ultimate is up, does he get healed? Uh, You're going to have to say that again. What was that? So You know, uh, Bloodhunter, when he gets a hero kill, he okay. gets the HP off the hero. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So if, so if Ra's ult, okay. Um, yeah. I that, again, that's you. You and your mechanics, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a <laughs> that's, tricky that's question. One, not too often we see a blood and and a raw in the same game, so I never really thought about that. <laughs> but uh, I well, I guess again, so I like to make similarities. So I guess token of life would be the similarity there. 
Yeah, I uh, guess. Still doesn't help me, but <laughs> I guess <laughs> if, you, if you knew the answer to that, then maybe, but... Uh, I'm afraid I don't, but it should it should restore some health with the token of life, at yeah. least, I think. That's, hey, I'm sure chat will give their opinion in six minutes from now. Yeah. We'll see what uh, what maybe they think. Oh, actually, that, that's, a, that's a good one to kind of confirm, actually. I'll bring that up to you. Our team down here eventually, or after we're done here. But, oh, Ravener gets picked off. Trying to dodge, but ain't going to happen. Yeah, Bloodhunter, speaking of him once again, though, he's still just sitting on that major totem. So this is now one of Imba Boy's better games here. Yeah, I didn't feel like Reason Gaming really had a plan with this army. They need to aim towards a goal. I mean, it's so important to always have a goal. Like, in two minutes, we are pushing that lane, for example. In two minutes, I'm going to have an Astro, so we need to group up, we need to do this, for example. In ten seconds, it's stacking time, for example. You yeah. always need to communicate and always n need to know what to do so that you're working towards something. But in this game, in just Reason Gaming, they, they didn't focus on getting the Raven or his key, they didn't necessarily group up and play offensive into the enemy forest. They were just like, they're just waiting to get picked off, it feels like. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of that, we just saw that right there. Andromeda gets dropped, and, and before Kraken can get there, he's he tried to send army charge to at least maybe set up a counter kill, but Gauntlet just a little too quick. So, yeah, how about Hag, though, again? It, it going definitely a very different build. Sackstone in a tablet, and now she has a Steam Staff picked up, so... I need to, oh, middle lane, it looks like there is more action once again, Kraken, he's standing his ground, at least Kraken comes out, he wants to fight the side by no, protect the melody, he will charge it, cancels uh, after a couple seconds there, Gala is still trying to juke and jive though, but here comes Bloodhunter with the silence, and down he falls, and this should be a second kill, maybe Congor, no, Congor doesn't come through, kind of just stands there, it's like, what do you want me to do, so two kills happening for reason, you do see Gauntlet has a buyback, so if they actually find it necessary here, this could get interesting, if the Hellborn team chases, Ooh, there was a buyback happening, I think, by someone. Uh, oh yeah, by actually Rhapsody, Rhapsody did, yeah. She already so, did. So, Hellborn team is gonna fall back. No? Or is it gonna get caught? <laughs> maybe, maybe. There's the bad plots. Oh, he swaps into it! And it oh my god, what a team player. <laughs> what a support. <laughs> oh, Panny. Oh, Panny. Yeah, he gets denied at least. He still dies in the end though, so it's like, really? <laughs> Luna's like, come on, man. <laughs> That's just rude. I hate when that happens, especially in team matchmaking, and people are just playing Andromeda, and instead of actually standing behind in a team fight, swapping someone out, they're just going straight in and then swapping you in instead. Yeah. Man, oh man, and you know, I can't believe I just saw that, but yeah, Behemoth's heart just right-clicked by Amun-Ra, so it's like, screw the Shaman's headdress, bear out all that build-up, I'm just going to go straight end-game Behemoth's heart here, because I can. Tempest? Okay, he has a haste rune. He's running with the blood on the ultimate. Uh, he doesn't really care, enough. man. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. And it's going to set up as a kill on a blood hunter. Love it. Hanskin knew what he had. The team support was there. And yeah, <laughs> running with the hammers. That takes balls, man. It but does. That in most cases, it's actually a good thing, though. People are so afraid of actually running with the yeah. Blood Hunter ultimate, but in most cases, you can just do it. I mean, he doesn't have... It doesn't have... That damage is not, not enough to kill you. So that if you just keep running, as soon as you get it on, you're, you're, most of the times, you will survive. 100%. It's that effect, man. It's that. It's like the spider sting from Iraq, and then people panic. It's like, dude, just kill it. It literally is so easy to kill. Or like the energy field from Engineer, for that, for that matter, is, you know, everyone just focuses down in the second. So, yeah, there's a lot of those abilities where... Yeah, when you really think about it, I 100% agree with you, man. Hammer just like, there are cases where it's actually just a lot better to run with it, but people are just so scared. Uh, oh, top lane, Ravener, and he gets dove. And I think, uh, unfortunately, the end may be near here. Yeah, I think so too. BMG is uh, playing extremely well right now. They're, well, they know what to do. Perfect team spirit, I, say, I would say. <laughs> um, well, they're executing their draft like as it should be. Yeah. They know what to do, so you should say. Yeah, they, they, they knew what to do with the Salmon Raw. <laughs> That's for sure. No, it's obviously, uh, and again, the game, just like game number one, this was an overall good series. You know, game number two was a very, 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 very one-sided match. But game one, I mean, it wasn't uh, too bad at all. And a lot of action, if anything. Game three, kind of the same story. Reason had a lead even earlier on. But, yeah, BMG, 100% agree with you. You know, they, although they've taken a break like a lot of teams have here after the World Finals, they, this is still bad monkey gaming in the end. <laughs> and, they are uh, they are still looking good as expected. So, yeah, they're just going to push on through. You can see this is obviously that overtime phase of the match here. Reason gets a couple of kills. Agava buybacks immediately coming through. Are we going to see a port? Does he have post-ace? No. 
Tempest is just running the old-fashioned way. But it's not going to matter. So is this this the is this the the opening for Amin Ra to come on the competitive scene? Oh, questionable. I don't think so. I'm afraid. But no. um, well, he can be useful in some situations. But the thing is that he doesn't. Well, it's hard to snowball with the hero. Sure, he gets tanky here. But if they were like in a um, Hmm. How should I put it? If they were in a disadvantage right now, like having a farmed animal Ra is not necessarily going to help you too much. So yeah. you need to be sure to actually win your lane or have a team that just supports him. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, BMG, so they do overstay their welcome a little bit right there, and obviously they will get cleaned up, so <laughs> Reason Gaming has some something to say about it. They ain't going to be giving up just yet. Again, they're already down 2 nothing in the best of the five. This, and they do lose this, this would be a Blood and was very close to dying, but again, that's the hero for you. His feast proc as they got the hero cut the last second, lived, and they started to turn it around from there, so <laughs> the dieback. <laughs> that's a clever name, actually. I never thought about that. <laughs> Buyback into death. That's what Hanskin just did right there. Uh, spell Shard's going to be picked up by Fusi, though, in the meantime. And, you know, this is just another one of these items that, you know, this wasn't the last patch, of course, but the patch before where... It got the change. They took away the charges of it. It's now just the one. You straight up buy it and you're good to go. Never really saw it, though. There's, there were people that were saying that, that it was going to be a big item pickup, but I guess, again, kind of a comfort factor. You think this is maybe the time where teams are willing to try different things now? or I think it's more of a case that he wants to try something new when he, he know he's comfortable in this game. So to say yeah. they're not going to lose it. So he wants to try something new. Uh, don't necessarily think that item has a place in the competitive scene. Not as, not as it is right now, at least. I think the health flower sheep and all those kind of items that yeah. there are um, options are, well, they're simply too good to ignore. Yeah, obviously the light brand in, in the usual case would probably be there as, oh, he saw Swap during a Rhapsody, so a lot was used, but they get the kill onto a Rhapsody at least. They might get him. And, oh my god, nope, he's going to live. Ag will live. The Hemorrhage again doing the running. He gets denied by Super KG, who then blinks away really quickly. So yeah, the dot damage, I guess, was just going to be enough, so they figure... Let's just deny you and get it taken care of. He buys back, by the way, so Reason needs to be careful. They're going back in, though. Gauntlet will fall. Amon Ra's here. He's got his ultimate up, ready to go if it calls for it. Tempest gets collapsed on Meanwhile off to the side. He does not have his team support. They're blocking him big time. Amon Ra jumps in, though. He's going to make some big plays, but no. Tempest goes down right there, and once again, will stay dead. Wretched Egg finally joins the party after the buyback. She takes a silence, so does buffer auto attack. She takes advantage of that, but nice stun for Ravener right there with a the ball lightning. And double tap for Bloodhunter. But Amon Ra, again, he doesn't care too much about that, so... He doesn't. He really doesn't. He can basically just be in there and do whatever the fuck he wants, so to say. <laughs> yeah. 37, 26 hero kills, man. Again, it's been... A, I, I mean, I'd say it's been... This is like the overtime play, but I don't know. I mean, Reason Gaming, if they do... Eh, maybe not. Mess is going to fall there. I'm trying to get yeah, home, man, they are further behind than you might actually think if you're looking at a golden experience because they don't have the heroes, they don't have the late game, they don't have the team fights. So, um, okay, so it looks like uh, the delay caught up. By the way, there's a couple of people on chat. Bloodhunter won't get any life when he kills Raw when ults. 100% sure, according to RS mm. Randy. Let's see. I don't know how much we can trust him, but <laughs> according to that guy. Let's take his word. According to that guy, it does not happen. So, again, I'll, I'll double check after this catch just to really make sure myself. But um. Yeah, um, speaking of that, the Parasite, the creep that we were talking about earlier, that if you consume it, the one that slows, it actually slows. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Right. So, yeah, so might be seeing some kind of ganks. Yeah, that, that, that is interesting. Uh, that could be very possible, as you said. Um, Congor dying here quickly by BMG. The, co the courier's coming in, though. They are going to jump. Recent gaming. They want to. They know that it's like an old in. Oh, wait. Andromeda gets hooked in right there. Going to fall. Protect him, Melody, in the background. Saving the day. Kraken gets pulled wow. in. The elemental foy going to be the one that really seals the deal, it looks like. And, yeah, they're just falling to pieces. Did Kraken get the token? He did. That's just like, aha, I got you guys. Uh, but I'm dead anyways. Ravener falls. Kraken's going to die. Ideally to Ancients, if he could have it his way. Ain't going to happen, though. And that, that should really do it in. I don't see any buybacks. Eh, maybe. They got a couple, actually. But what would that do in the end? Probably not a whole lot. Uh, Luna's going to fall as well. So it will be a genocide there for Bad Monkey Gaming. No token, at least. But, yeah, that, that was obviously a case for a reason. They, they had to do something. 
trying to make a play there. Yeah, I felt like they had a chance to make some big team plays or a big team fight happening right there with the release crack yeah. and hitting like four people, but it's perfect positioning by Seal Kid. Oh, the protective melody. Yeah, okay. the protective melody as as it usually comes to it's just. Uh, that's the thing too with this Legion team. They you, you got you got Andromeda is great for stopping his year, but he also is great for stopping a Tempest ultimate. It's like one of the two. One neither one was stopped in the end because of the circumstance. So if that happens, yeah, you're you're most likely not going to be winning the fight as we saw there. Um, as again, so now we're in the true overtime of this is probably going to be a game three victory here for BMG and thus wrapping up the series. Um, again, having you on, do we another another thought on? We're gonna conquer. We don't see the token here because it was used, but the five minute now token alive. Is that a oh, change I you love like? that change. Yeah, yeah, I, I really do. It it kind of gives away or takes away a little bit more of the Hellborn advantage as well. Um, so well, it gives a little bit more of a. Um, you don't, you, the team won't have, or I mean, the seven minute. It wasn't be too much. First, it started at ten minutes, yeah. which was obviously too long. <laughs> then it reduced like silly, it to yeah. seven minutes. It was better. It was, but. Team still played very, very passive. Uh, we can yeah. see that in like I think it was Stay Green versus. I'm not sure if it was the grand finals of uh, season two. I don't think so. I think it was when BM Stay Green was playing like uh, Sync Esports or something, and they were at the disadvantage. And then they picked up a uh, token, yeah. and I was like, yeah. farmed, farmed, farmed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then they do it again. They just wait for the token to respawn, or I mean the conquer to respawn. They kill it again. The Legion team is not. Like able to t actually take a team fight in there because it's so far away from their tower, so far mm -hmm. away from your base. So yeah, this five minute cooldown, it's definitely a good thing. Yeah, I was saying that the the game one, I believe it was, is just. It, it, I think that's one of those changes that's just like I don't see how someone could dislike that change. It's just like it's just a change that makes sense and it's just a good change overall. So yeah, that no, was good to see that. Hell, I, I, and honestly, I want to go even further. I want to see the old Congor back, the one that takes minus armor and whatnot. Yeah, I, I, I want to see Soul Stealer Andromeda Pestilence coming in and taking them out in five seconds. So that was fun to watch. It really but, uh, was. We uh, haven't seen a Congo kill in level one for ages now. Yeah, I feel like it's it. time soon. It's it's coming. I feel it. Maybe in this week's five versus five tournament. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah, the five Might and five cups this weekend. Uh, is, that, is that some insight? You're not planning on playing in that day, are you? No, I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to play that. All right. But I'm definitely gonna be following it. Right on. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, speaking of that, actually, well, again, we're just, you just see kills happening and <laughs> they're just diving the well. Um, you mentioned the 5v5 Cup this weekend, excited for that, and uh, the little bit of twist to the 5v5 Cup this weekend, a little bit more even, because NVIDIA actually sponsoring this weekend's 5 versus 5 Cup uh, with the with the winner actually receiving five top-of-the-line graphics cards. Uh, I'm going to actually pull it up right here to confirm exactly what we were uh, looking at with that, but uh, GTX 770s. I mean, those are definitely some some very nice graphics cards there that uh, that the first place prize uh, will we'll take home with them. So again, all you need to do is sign up with a group of friends. Hey, they don't even have to be your friends. They just got to be decent at Han. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> form a team, and uh, who knows? Who knows what can happen? Looking forward to that, and you know, for the community there to get some get some content going once again. So. Um, that's this weekend. As usual, there's also, also the Variety Cup and the uh, NA Cups on Thursday and Friday. Uh, those are more of the casual events and more different style. And, and this week, it's actually Mid-Wars, I believe, going back to the Mid-Wars. So th those, those seem to be a lot of fun. And, and again, I'll see. M maybe maybe get my own team in that one, the CP Kappas, to participate. We'll see, though. We'll see. <laughs> Please do. Uh, <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, but, no, I, as you can see, though, obviously it's official. Bad Monkey Gaming, they take out Reason. Three games to nothing here. In this best out of five, and thus they're they're set now to move on to face Sync Esports in the uh, in the title fight for this week, and that's as always a good matchup there. So, you know, as uh, that's right now scheduled for Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 1800 Central European Time. Obviously, I'll let you guys know if there is any changes in that schedule for whatever reason. Um, Zooey, appreciate it, man. Yep. Had some fun here. Any any final thoughts? Any any shout outs you want to make here? Mm. Nah, I think I'm good. Or actually, I'm going to make one quick shout out. Uh, if you've got a team that's like mid to high tier level and you're looking for scrims, feel free to contact me in-game because um, earlier today I actually created this Skype conversation for mid to high tier scrims. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. To easier find scrims, I would say. So just feel free to contact me if you've got a mid to high tier 
team looking for scrims. Yeah, and you know, with that said, you can't find him on contact me, and I'll, and I'll lead you to him. I'll put, put it put it that way. So, uh, no, that's, that's a great idea. Definitely uh, appreciate taking the initiative on that. Um, so, yeah, with that said, again, as far as that's all concerned, guys, obviously that's going to wrap it up for today here for BMG over recent gaming. Three games to nothing. Again, set to play Sync Esports on Thursday. Uh, one other thing, earlier today, as I announced, uh, I actually sat down with Hanskin of BMG and I got the chance to talk with him about Patch 3.4, some of the changes that he both liked and disliked, and, and that is now uploaded to the, the, the Honcast YouTube. So you can check it out for yourself if you like. We actually linked it on the social.